Hi, welcome to this video presentation by the Unknown India YouTube channel. Please view it on a laptop, desktop or tablet for better video quality and use a headphone or earbuds for better audio quality. Were the Harappans and Vedic people totally different? Did they live in different periods of time or in different regions? Did they follow different cultures and religions? These are some of the questions that have been nagging historians for quite some time. In this video, we shall provide clear answers to all these questions. If you like this video, please click the like button, share it with your contacts, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos and other announcements. Thanks. We will get to our answers using two important sources of information. The Harappan civilization can be understood through archaeological evidence of excavated objects and structures used by the people then. Whereas, in the case of Vedic culture, there is only scriptural evidence from the Rigveda and other Vedic works. But we should also remember that the primary focus of Vedic literature is only on devotion and rituals of worship. Therefore, we cannot expect too many details of things like civic life, architecture, town planning, etc. in Vedic works. We need to keep this in mind while comparing the two sets of evidence. Some historians, being completely oblivious to this basic nature of evidences, are hastily concluding that the two were totally different. And it is unfortunate that textbooks in schools and colleges also reflect this flawed logic. Therefore, we shall examine four aspects of both the Harappan civilization and Vedic culture, namely time frame, geography, culture, mainly occupation, animals used, etc., religion, and spirituality, using these two sources of information. Let us first look at the time periods of the two. Modern archaeology and carbon dating technology have established a probable chronology and periodization for the different phases of the Harappan civilization, which is now shown on the screen. Of these five phases, the early Harappan from 3200 to 2600 BCE and mature Harappan from 2600 to 1900 BCE are of special interest to us. The basis of this chronology is very well explained in the research by Dr. Karsten Lemon along with A. Khan. Their article on this is referenced in the description below. The 10 books or mandalas of Rigveda can be broadly categorized as the old books numbering 6, 3, 7, 4 and 2 and the new books numbering 5, 1, 8, 9 and 10. The early books of Rigveda are dated around 4500 BCE. We have a separate video on this dating and you can find its link in the description below. The period of the old books of the Rigveda corresponds to the early Harappan civilization period and the new books of Rigveda correspond to the period of the mature Harappan civilization period. Trade with the Mesopotamians, Sumerians, Akkadians, etc. is testified by Mesopotamian words like Bekanata and Mana found in book number 8 of the Rigveda. Therefore, we can conclude that the Harappan period was part of the Vedic period, which predated it. Early Harappan sites were all excavated only around the Indus river banks. But later, the number of sites on the banks of the estuary now dried up Saraswati river have been far greater. So much so, many historians have started calling it the Saraswati civilization. The Rigveda venerates river Saraswati and mentions its name 72 times. So, it is very evident that most of the Harappan and Vedic settlements were on the banks of river Saraswati. We have a separate video on Saraswati civilization and you can find its link in the description below. As the river Saraswati started drying up, the Harappans shifted from northwest India to the Gangetic plain. As by now, iron had been discovered and it became possible to clear the thickly foliated forests of this region with iron implements so that the land became suitable for human inhabitation. Again, we have a separate video on the first use of iron in India and you can find its link in the description below. 
This trend of migration was accelerated after 1900 BCE by which time river Saraswati had totally dried up. Therefore, in addition to the present day Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat and upper Gangetic plain namely western UP where the early and mature Harappan sites were found, archaeologists have excavated a large number of late Harappan sites in the middle and lower reaches of the Gangetic plain that is in eastern UP. The Rigveda mentions not only the rivers of Punjab namely Sindhu and its tributaries but even the rivers to the south and east of Punjab such as Saraswati and its tributaries Ganga Yamuna etc in the Nadi Sukta in the hymn number 75 of the book or mandala number 10 you now see that hymn on the screen You now see on the screen the list of all the rivers mentioned in the various books or mandalas of the Rigveda. It is significant that Janvi, which is the Vedic name for Ganga or Ganges, is mentioned in book 3, which is the second earliest composed mandala of Rigveda. Vedic people were also aware of river Sarayu mentioned in book 4 of Rigveda. Yamuna is mentioned in book 5, which is the sixth book to be composed out of the 10 books. Therefore, It is clear that the Vedic people were very well aware of all the eastern rivers but it might have taken them a little time to spread eastwards. There is another theory that the Vedic people expanded from east to west. We are not getting into that debate right now. However, it is clear that the Harappan and Vedic regions of habitation seem to be quite the same. We are directly and very specifically told by the Rigvedic composers in categorical words that the vedic people were the inhabitants of the banks of a particular river rigveda verse 96.2 of the 7th mandala says purus live on the banks of the saraswati this is direct and categorical reference to the purus the very tribe who represent the vedic indo aryans and are the people of the book it is also found in the other old books of rigveda Obviously the Purus must have belonged to early Harappan period of 3200 to 2600 BCE or even earlier because one Saraswati started drying up after that and was totally dried up by 1900 BCE Secondly they are mentioned in the third earliest book of the Rigveda namely Mandala 7 it therefore can be deduced that there were several tribes of early Harappans and one of them were the Purus also that the vedic people were a subset of harappans in other words some tribes followed the vedic religion others did not rigveda hymn number 101 of mandala 10 describes in several verses the various steps involved in farming and agriculture such as yoking of the bulls plowing sowing the seeds watering through a canal from a well etc There are several references to agricultural implements in the Rigveda. The grains such as paddy, wheat and barley are also mentioned in the Rigveda. Granaries discovered in Harappa, Mohenjo-daro, Lothal and Rakigadi give the most direct evidence of agricultural activity in the Harappan sites. Grains found at Harappan sites include wheat, barley, lentil, chickpea and sesame. Millets are also found from some sites in Gujarat. An outstanding discovery of excavation at Kalibangan, a very ancient Saraswati civilization site in Hanumangarh district of Western Rajasthan, is a ploughed field of the pre-urban period of around 2800 BCE. It shows a grid of furrows with one set closely spaced at 30 cm running east to west for shorter crops like gram and the other widely spaced at around 190 cm running north to south. for taller crops like mustard indicating a double cropping pattern this pattern bears a remarkable resemblance to modern plowing and cropping pattern followed even today in this neighborhood so it is fairly clear that both for the vedic people and the harappans farming and agriculture were the primary food producing occupations the horse or ashwaha or ashwam is mentioned 215 times in the rigveda and there are also 265 verses mentioning the word chariot the references are found both in the old and the new books similarly 
there is enough evidence of both chariot and horse in harappan or indus valley civilization excavations the remains of a chariot have recently been discovered at sanawli in bagpat district of uttar pradesh and carbon dated to 4000 years ago but it cannot be said with certainty that these chariots were drawn by horses however skeletal and dental remains of horses dated between 2315 and 1700 bce have been excavated at harappan levels in surkotara in kutch district of gujarat these have been authenticated by the archaeozoologist sandor bokani an internationally respected authority in the field in 1991 horse remains have also been found at other indus valley and harappan sites such as kalibangan dholavira lotal harappa mohenjadaro etc and these are documented in the encyclopedia of indian archaeology by the much respected dr a ghosh former director general of the archaeological survey of india terracotta figurines of horses have also been found in several harappan sites including mohenjadaro thus the spurious argument by some indologists that the harappans did not have the horse and it was brought by the invading aryans in 1500 bce does not stand the test of truth or logic just as the aryan invasion theory has been proved to be a bogus one in the 1990s itself worship of agni or fire god through yagnas was an extremely important aspect of the vedic religion so much so the very first verse of rigveda starts with a hymn on lord agni even today the fire plays a major role in most hindu rituals rigveda mentions fire altars in several of the old books rigveda verse 36 in the mandala number 2 specifies the three fire altars three types of fire altars namely square semicircular and circular are prescribed in other vedic works also these three types of fire altars were discovered in kalibangan in rajasthan and are dated to the early harappan period of 3200 to 2600 bce that is over 5200 to 4600 years ago in lothal gujarat fire altars have been found in both private houses and in public places these are dated to the mature harappan period of 2600 to 1900 bce or 4600 to 3900 years ago it is very obvious that the vedic practice of conduct of yagnas or sacrificial rituals using fire altars was also practiced very much by the harappans or indus saraswati people every harappan householder was practicing fire worship as prescribed in the vedas though the rigveda in verse numbers 18.7 and 30.7 of mandala 1 and 114.9 of mandala 10 mentions the word yoga in the spiritual context of synchronization or harmonization of the mind detailed descriptions of yoga postures and routines are explained in later vedic texts namely upanishads such as swetaeshvatar upanishad and katopanishad and sage patanjali's yoga sutras which compiled detailed knowledge on yoga practices from various vedic texts several small seals and terracotta figurines depicting different yoga poses have been excavated at different harappan or indus saraswati civilization sites so it is fairly obvious that the practice of yoga was quite popular in the harappan periods we have just used four aspects of the vedic culture and harappan or indus saraswati civilization as per common archaeological and scriptural evidences available for reasons of brevity of this video though evidences are available in several other aspects too from the evidences given to you in this video so far it is very clear that both the vedic people and harappans or indus saraswati people lived in the same time periods in the same geographical regions and followed identical occupational cultural and religious practices maybe one was a subset of the other is it not then ridiculous or mischievous to claim as some indologists and historians do that they were totally different people i leave the final judgment of this question to you viewers Please check out our other videos in the full playlist.
and also subscribe to our channel by clicking the respective links thank you